How's it going guys, Chris here, checking out a bunch of other alien creatures in Starfield, and in today's guide we're going to be visiting the Cheyenne system, a fairly low level one that you'll naturally visit if you follow the game story path, which has got loads of different fauna for us to discover, spread out over three separate places. So the Cheyenne system is a pretty vital one that you'll venture to as you play the game, being run by Freestar Collective, also home to their capital city on the planet of Aquila which is where we're going to be dropping down first. Aquila's got 10 native species in total, so quite a lot of creatures compared to most planets, and these can be found spread out over different biomes and habitats. One creature that can live in a few of these different biomes is a huge bug called the Grazing Incipher, a fairly placid thing that typically hangs around in small groups. Although these guys have big scythe-like hands and look a bit like they'd be up for causing some damage, they don't naturally attack you on sight, usually standing their ground and opting to try and scare you off instead. They look a bit like a praying mantis, only one with a weird vertical mouth surrounded by loads of teeth and pincers, giving them a bit of a nasty looking appearance, despite having a relatively peaceful nature, only choosing to defend themselves should they be attacked. You can find these things running around in Aquila's savannah areas, like the ones nearby to the main city, though you'll also find green variants in the coniferous forests, which look a little bit more like the mantis bugs that have probably inspired their design. Another somewhat peaceful beast you'll bump into is the Elk Krangan, a big mammal type creature that looks a little bit like a strange mashup between a hippo and a platypus. The Krangans are pretty chunky dudes that spend their days grazing on grass and piling on the pounds, also congregating in small herds just like the last creature. Populated around the savannah areas, able to withstand frosty climates too, having all that fat to keep them nice and warm. They might look a bit like massive boulders wandering around if you spot them from a distance, but up close you'll see that they're actually just round hairless things that have a similar sort of characteristic to cows and livestock, only having that huge body structure and Y-shaped duck build to set themselves apart. Although they might seem calm on the face of it, the Elk Krangan usually aren't quite as forgiven as those mantis aliens, if you don't respect their boundaries, with the herd being easily spooked and prone to charging if you get too close. Probably the planet's most notorious creature, the Ashtar is a dangerous predator that preys on the local wildlife and causes a lot of problems for the communities who choose to reside near their domain, like the people of Aquila City. Ashtar attacks are fairly common for humans here and are one of the main reasons why the city is housed within the walls guarded by security, to essentially keep them out and stop them from causing havoc. The Ashtar themselves are pack animals, sort of resembling a saber-toothed tiger that is strapped on a load of armour plating. Pretty powerful and unforgiving in nature, hunting down anything they want to for food or territory. They're not exactly huge creatures, but they are strong, very durable, and usually overwhelm their targets in numbers, which gives them the edge in a fight, a fight that they usually tend to start. To make matters worse, the Ashtar have adapted to survive in several different planetary biomes, allowing them to bully creatures far and wide across Aquila. Did I mention they can also spit rocks at you? Well, they can also do that too. By far the tallest creature on Aquila, and one of the biggest in this guide, is a gentle giant called the Mosnaf, a dinosaur-like alien that wanders around the plains of Aquila's savannah. Although these guys do have features to try and let them blend into their environments, such as rocky looking skin, grass-like fur, and a couple of twigs that stick out of their head like Homer Simpson hair, it's a bit hard not to stand out when you're the size of a bloody house, a problem the Mosnaf knows all too well, being another one of the Ashtar's victims, despite having that size advantage. With that said, their disguise works pretty well when they're lying down, as it's easy to mistake them for part of the scenery. Though being defensive creatures, you won't really have to worry about bumping into one and waking it up from its slumber, as these guys will typically choose to run away or avoid you, unless of course you shoot it. Probably not an advisable thing to do unless you want a giant giraffe tortoise chasing after you. Going from one of the planet's largest creatures to one of its smallest as if you look up into the sky, you'll often see the baleen rotifers gracefully floating around above your head. These things have a sort of jellyfish appearance in the way they look and move around, being propelled through the air by their pulsating heads while whipping their long tails around to help them navigate. Being the peaceful creatures they are, don't expect them to be hostile towards you or other life forms, with them casually going about their business bobbing around in the savannah and the frozen plains biomes. They're extremely low on health and don't have any ways to attack, so they probably couldn't take you on anyway, even if they wanted to. Something that would be quite happy to take you on though is one of the planet's strangest and creepiest critters called the Drop Psalm, which is essentially a huge woodland spider covered in spiny barbs and sharp fangs, not to mention that its head also looks like a brain, just to round things off and make it even weirder. 
If you want to get technical, these guys only have six legs, so therefore couldn't really be related to spiders. But they sure as hell scurry around like them, being lightning fast and eager to attack if you stray too close by. One thing to give the drops arm an edge in a fight is the ability to dig underground and resurface near to their target, letting them use sneaky pounce attacks to catch their prey off guard. And most of the time, you'll find these creatures coupled up into pairs, though you'll have to wander off into Aquila's forested areas if you want to track them down. Definitely one of the planet's coolest creatures to discover. A slightly less cool but still notable creature nevertheless is the crawling Eurypterid, essentially a wandering fossil. This guy's name comes from extinct sea scorpions that were around a few hundred million years ago on Earth, and they sort of look like spiny arthropods with large pincers and dagger-like mandibles. Despite having all those nasty spikes though, these creatures are pretty much harmless, often found congregating in small groups around the planet's forested and frozen environments, just scurrying around minding their own business. The Buzz Runner, on the other hand, is a larger reptilian creature with a pretty wild design to it, having a bit of a dinosaur type appearance, only with a really unique face like a hammerhead shark with mandibles. Not to mention the large plates running down the creature's spine, the multiple muscular limbs, and the fact that its tail splits into three separate appendages webbed together, making the Buzz Runner a pretty bizarre thing. These are also found in Aquila's coniferous forests, and like many of the species, they often prefer to chill out in small groups, possibly having safety in numbers. Though being armed with those deadly spines, mandibles and that big three-pronged tail, well this gives them all the weaponry they'll need to fend off a possible threat, as they're not exactly shy creatures when it comes to attacking. Their attacks are fast and ferocious, and they'll chase you down in groups, ramming you with that head while knocking you around with that tail, giving you a good enough reason to stay out of their way. If you venture over to one of the planet's oceans, you'll be able to spot a big creature swimming around near the water's surface. These are the Rainbow Agnathan, which from a distance with your scanner might be mistaken for a crocodilian creature due to the way its silhouette is shaped. But this guy is actually a jawless fish with a pointed snout, huge fins, and skin that's covered in yellow blotches, sort of looking like the fish equivalent to a salamander, having somewhat similar markings. With Aquila's oceans being filled with microbial, this makes these creatures a bit riskier to study up close, especially with the Rainbow Agnathan also seeing you as a hostile, prone to gliding over and slapping you around with its face to try and warn you off. With its attacks also able to inflict laceration damage too, they'll need to be remedied with certain aid items. Never a good thing if you don't happen to have them. There's one last creature on Aquila to check out, with that being another little floaty thing found in the frozen biomes, seeming to be baleen rotifers from afar, until of course you get a little bit closer. Despite having a bit of a sinister name that implies these things are going to give you a bad time, the flying leech isn't out there trying to drink everyone's blood. Instead, being another graceful creature that won't cause you any harm, drifting around like a floating raspberry, with its body made up of a cluster of reddish growths, having a single appendage dangling down with little wings and a pronged tail sprouting out from it. Flying leeches bob around fairly high up in the air, though they're still pretty easy to spot, littering the sky in large numbers like a bunch of balloons that have accidentally been let loose. While we're on the topic of Aquila, we might as well cover one of its moons which also just so happens to have a few alien life forms scampering around on it too, with that moon being Kodos, home to another four species. One of the more unique creatures found here is the herding cage brain grazer. Think a giraffe, only one with loads of eyes and teeth, and with its brain rattling around within a nest-like container on top of its head. Pretty weird. They've got thick craggy hides and a club tail to add even more funky features to their overall design, and although they might seem like they'd be a bit hostile, looking like some sort of alien dragon thing, these guys are actually peaceful creatures, usually found in large groups grazing on the planet's dense foliage. The cage brains have also got their undersized exposed too, in the same sort of mesh container as their heads. Bit of a mystery as to why it's got all of its organs out on show, doesn't exactly seem like a good evolutionary trait, but I guess it does make them interesting at least. Also worth mentioning that it's not wise to attack them, as although they won't normally harm you, blasting them with some lead is a good way to turn them against you. A much smaller creature can also be found scurrying around on the floor, in the form of the beetle geophage, a pretty basic bug with a rounded shell that can thrive in many of the moon's various habitats. I suppose they do have nostrils though, which is a little bit weird for a beetle. You can find very similar variants over on the planet Jemison, back in the Alpha Centauri system, and for the most part, they're just going to act like typical bugs, wandering around trying to survive, while avoiding conflicts and getting into trouble with you and other creatures, being extremely weak and unable to fight back should any trouble come their way. Though something that is prone to causing a bit of trouble to yourself and other aliens is a strange crab creature called the Flocking Horn Face Grazer. 
Aside from basically being a snail inside a crab shell, a pretty bizarre crab shell at that, this guy does what its name suggests and hangs around in fairly big flocks, eating away at the planet's grass. Those claws might seem like they'd be the creature's primary weapon of choice in combat, but they're actually not, with that oddly shaped shell having the unique ability to fire green goo at their targets, to both damage and slow down their movement. Being in large groups lets them bombard you with projectiles and rain death from above, all working together to wear down their targets with constant ranged attacks, while closing in for some melee strikes as they get a little bit closer. These things are surprisingly nasty creatures, being territorial things that don't like sharing their space with you or other aliens, often prone to attacking on sight. Though one creature the horn-faced grazer is practically at war with is the hunting bone shell, a cricket-styled alien with a tough armoured shell. These guys can be seen hopping around in the same biomes as the horn face, constantly coming into conflict with them, and although they can pose a threat to yourself, sometimes prone to giving you a painful bite that can cause laceration damage, they're usually going to retreat from danger instead jumping away as you approach. This could be down to the fact that they're often not backed up by a bunch of buddies, being solitary creatures that are often found alone or in small numbers, so using those powerful hind legs to dive away is probably the wiser choice, though being backed up by that tough shell instead should at least give them a bit of protection, letting them withstand a fair amount of damage despite being on the smaller side. The last place you'll be able to find alien life in the Cheyenne system is on another moon which orbits the gas giant of Montara quite aptly named Montara Luna, and there's quite a few wacky ones to be found on here, with the moon having seven different species in total. One of the more common ones you'll run into, or one that's most likely to run into you first, is a highly aggressive spider alien called the Swarming Sunflower, which at a first glance might look like a plant until it charges at you with all its mates. As the name suggests, you can expect these guys to be patrolling around in small swarms, bullying the local wildlife, attacking humans, and generally being a bit of a pest roaming around the plains looking for trouble. Probably not what you'd expect a creature called a sunflower to be doing. Once they've found something to bully, they'll dash over with those long spindly legs and attack with melee strikes or spit out projectiles to deal damage over range. And with the swarming sunflower being venomous and having the ability to burrow underground only to resurface in different locations, this makes them even more of a pest to deal with, forcing you to watch your back just in case a sneaky one decides to pop up from behind. Another common creature you'll find pretty much everywhere on Montana Luna flooding the skies is a flying alien called the Herding Cockatrice Herbivore, which might look a bit like a bunch of bats flapping around at first glance, but probably has more in common with a bird or even a pterosaur, having a head crest protruding from the back of its skull, also having several eyes wrapped around its head, along with some colourful stripes and markings that kind of makes it look like it spent quite a bit of time in the tattoo shop. It gets its name from a mythical beast that's essentially a two-legged dragon with a rooster head a fairly nasty monster with toxic breath and the ability to turn its victims into stone. Thankfully, that's not the case here, with these starfield aliens being quite passive and unlikely to attack first, unless of course you decide to wind them up. Not exactly a brilliant idea with these things being all over the place. Next up is definitely one of the planet's wackiest freaks, in the form of the flocking horse Amanda Grazer, which looks completely off the scale when it comes to being different. Now nothing says look at me like these guys do. Their camouflage might be a bit crap, but at least they've got style. Not only do these things have a really unique and colourful appearance, but they also scamper around in a way that makes their legs look like giant fingers. Though despite being packed full of muscle, they're not typically aggressive creatures, only really choosing to fight in self-defence, with their attacks having staggering abilities when they need to use them. Also Amanda Grazers are docile in nature, and they gather around in small flocks for protection which is probably needed with all those pain in the ass sunflower spiders running around causing havoc. But going from one of the most bizarre and complex looking creatures to one of the planet's simplest, which sort of looks a bit like a hermit crab wandering around with a craggy shell on its back resembling one of the moon's rocks. The Senti Skull Grazer is a small creature that scampers around low to the floor, and if you look closely underneath that rocky shell, it sort of seems crustacean-like with lobster features. It's unknown whether or not that rock on the creature's back is actually part of its anatomy or whether it's just a rock it's decided to pick up and use for a bit of extra padding. Definitely helps it blend into the environment though, with it easily being mistaken for a stone on the floor when standing still. If you've ever wanted to see a space dodo, then here you go. And unlike their extinct Earth counterparts, these ones are much beefier, having a load of armour-like plating running down their spines. The flocking dodo grazer is a peaceful creature that can be found in swamps, up on the top of hills, and roaming around on the savanna plains, typically found in groups which can vary in size. Their undersides are covered in scales and feathers, giving them a bit of a reptilian bird hybrid appearance, 
and they're also really colourful things, with many different shades of blue and purple. Enhanced by the sun's gleam bouncing off that backplate and to make those hues even more vibrant. As far as creatures go in Starfield, these dodos do look a little bit daft, but nevertheless, there's still interesting things to observe. Providing you can do, that is, and don't get jumped by those annoying sunflower buggers while you do. If you thought those sunflowers were bad though, wait till you run into the pack Octo Maggot, an even more ferocious creature, and one that's definitely much uglier. These disturbing looking things are like giant truck sized grubs, complete with razor sharp crab claws, loads of spiky teeth housed within a circular jaw, and generally one of the nastiest faces in the entire galaxy. Not exactly something you'll want to bump into, especially when the sun goes down. These Octo Maggots are definitely the stuff of nightmares, and despite carrying a lot of junk in the trunk, they're surprisingly nimble creatures, they're even able to outrun you, making them all the more deadly. Aside from lashing out with those pincers that can deal laceration damage, they can also shoot projectiles over distance too, and tend to gather around in small groups to boost their effectiveness when hunting, generally being a bit of a menace to the rest of the moon's fauna, which is often victim to their powerful attacks and relentless aggression. If a pack of them come charging your way, you might be better whipping out the big guns. If we venture over to one of the moon's ocean biomes, by whipping out that scanner and looking out into the water, you'll often be able to find some really strangely shaped fish cruising around, with loads of long streaky ribbon-like fins waving about from their bodies. These are the schooling featherfin filterers, peaceful creatures that just glide around under the water's surface, that won't cause you any harm, unless you choose to attack them that is, which just so happens to be one of the only ways to actually get them to come closer. Viewing them up close as they surface gives us a much better look at the creature's weird structure, having a weird body with a bunch of thin, muscular, root-like arms protruding out from it, which the fins grow along the edges of. They've got really unique mouths, kind of resembling a star-nosed mole, also having quite a few small spines running down some of those limbs, giving us a pretty interesting looking creature, which is otherwise normally hiding out of sight under the water. So those are all the alien creatures you'll find in Starfield Cheyenne System. Let me know in the comments which your favourite creature in the guide was, and give me a thumbs up on your way out if you enjoyed the video. Of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, now's a pretty good time to do so, especially if you want to see more of those Starfield aliens, which you'll be able to find in other guides on my channel. But anyway, thanks for watching guys, take it easy, and I'll be seeing you in the next one.